All right, one of, I guess I should stand in front of the microphone. One of my uh, favorite uh, Westerns, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. When I was looking uh, for a title for this presentation, it seemed very appropriate uh, for ELDs because the, there is good, there can be bad, and there can be very ugly, uh, depending. So that's what uh, uh, I've titled this 20-minute uh, presentation, trying to cover uh, four hours worth of, of information in, in, in the 20 minutes, but uh, we'll, we'll do, a, do my best. So what is an ELD? All right, so press, press. All right. So an ELD, electronic logging device, uh, being mandated by the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. Uh, Tony, and I think, is in the next presentation. He'll give you the dates of, of when all this is going to happen in the regulatory type of review. Uh, I'm kind of uh, trying to focus on what is it supposed supposed to do, and it's 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 programming based on a telematics system. And what is a telematics <coughs> system? It's a system that connects the truck. It's it's a black box, if you will, that that collects data from the EMC, and in far as the FMCSA concern, is concerned, what they want this data to be is synchronizing the vehicle engine to accurately record driving time. That's all the, well, that's not all the FMCSA is concerned about, but in with this ELD, the only thing automatic about this ELD will be recording driving time. There's going to be four other duty statuses. There's going to be the off-duty, there's going to be the on-duty, not driving, there's going to be the sleeper berth, and there's going to be personal conveyance, yard moves. So there's going to be other uh, functionality of this ELD, but it's going to require driver interaction. It's not something you're just going to be able to bury it under the dashboard and the driver's never going to have to look at it. They are going to have to interact with this ELD. Uh, what is automatic is recording the drive time, the data coming from the telematics coming from the truck is going to tell this ELD that the truck is moving and it's, the driver is automatically, if the driver doesn't interact with his ELD, it'll put him into driving time automatically. And it'll stay in driving until that vehicle stops for, at five minutes, if it's stopped moving, uh, it'll ask the driver, do you want to change out of driving mode or do you want to continue? If the driver does not interact with the ELD, it's going to automatically put him into on duty, not driving. And that's as about as automatic as it's going to go. So you can imagine a driver <clears throat> getting into the yard, tired as heck, turns off the engine, doesn't interact with his ELD, it puts him into uh, on duty, not driving, and he goes home, has a nice supper, and gets up after nice 10 hours of rest at least, comes into work ready to go, his ELD is going to say zero hours available for driving because he didn't interact with it. It stayed in on duty, not driving the whole night. And uh, uh, he then, uh, the, the driving time is not editable, but all of the other duty statuses will be editable. So somebody's got to go back in and edit it and say, okay, at 8 o'clock last night, he went off duty, he wasn't really on duty. And so all of that has to be to be managed within the ELD. So who's required to uh, have, to be on an ELD? And basically, uh, the FMCSA rule says, in a nutshell, it's anybody that fills out graph grid logs today must use an ELD. And that's just about uh, 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 if you're not using uh, a graph uh, grid, the, uh, the the rods as they call them. If you're a short short haul, you're, you 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 qualify for the, that exemption, but uh, you're so but you won't be required to have an ELD in that case. Uh, and then there's other exceptions, uh, old equipment, uh, 2000 and older that you won't have to have an ELD. But I, you know, I think uh, there is a strong case to for everybody to maybe not move to an ELD, but to move to a telematics, and we'll get into that in a, in just a bit. So. Device must be FMCSA certified, and there's a whole conversation around that uh, uh, because the FMCSA, in their wisdom, has made 
the certification process self-certified. So I'm the manufacturer of an ELD. Yes, FMCSA, I meet all your requirements. Put me on your list. And so if you go to the FMCSA list today, you will see two pages worth of certified ELDs, none of which you've probably ever heard of. They are from companies uh, that think that if I'm first, if I can get my name on the list, I can, I can get some of this business right off, right off the bat. And there's reasons why the name brands aren't on there yet. And again, we can get into that later. Uh, you know, if I don't get it to it today in, uh, in this presentation, happy to talk about it uh, afterwards at, at uh, a luncheon of our Lunch and Learn, sponsored by Geotab. Thanks uh, for sponsoring lunch. So, uh, and I, and I kind of uh, touched on the last one, uh, does not allow for editing of the drive time. So that won't be editable, but all the others will. And uh, that creates a, uh, a system that has to be managed. All right, so. The good. Anybody uh, remember this guy's name in this movie? What was it? Clint Eastwood. Well, that's his, it's his real name, but what was his movie name in oh. this? Blondie. They never really did have a name. They just called him Blondie. So. so what is the good of an ELD? There is uh, safer, easier, faster. It is, it is data. And moving data is easier than moving at paper. I, uh, a couple of weeks ago, happened to uh, be able to attend uh, uh, a conference in Las Vegas. It happened to be <laughs> during our snowmageddon uh, period here in, in, in Oregon, in Portland, uh, much to my wife's uh, chagrin. She had to stay home and uh, was snowed in. And uh, her opinion was that I was at the, uh, the Wynn uh, Casino sitting by the pool of shorts and sunglasses and a drink in my hand. Uh, I had to try to convince her that the pool was closed. But So at this conference, uh, you know, it was hosted by, 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 by Geotab, and they really went into telematics. They went into big data and how big data is changing our world and everything that we do. For example, you know, Amazon right now, they have tons of data that they are now able to analyze and they're getting into predictive shipping. They can look at the trends from all of this data, from everybody logging in and ordering whatever they order through, through Amazon and they can start predicting what they're going to need and start having the production moving before an order is ever placed. So that's on the Amazon side, what big data can do. And that the telematics in the trucking world is going into that, that same, uh, same path. Uh, and uh, I was quite impressed with, with the, the, the presentation that uh, they presented on the studies that, uh, that Geotab has, has, has taken, uh, undertaken and to, to measure exactly what can a telematic system do and what good can it do and uh, geotab is one of the bigger players out there they've got over 630,000 units out there so they've got tons of data coming in and they've been able to do uh, case studies on small uh, uh, small uh, lightweight fleets and mid-range fleets and heavy duty fleets so they've they've really di they really were able to dissect based on all of this data what does telematics, what can telematics do for the trucking industry, uh, no matter what size fleet, uh, what size duty fleet that you have. So the uh, you know, bottom line that they came out with is that a telematic system can save a reduced fleet cost by 10 to 16 percent. So that's pretty darn dramatic when you talk about well, any size fleet saving 10 to 15 percent, say 10 to 16 percent. So what areas does it, does it, can it save in? And it's safety, being able to uh, measure and do something uh, immediately about uh, driver performance that affects safety. It obviously fuel, measuring fuel use and idling, 
big savings there. Maintenance, they're, they're starting to get into predictive maintenance. Uh, they talked about uh, a company in Europe that uh, is collecting their fleet leasing and for vehicles, not trucks, but vehicles, where they can predict based on the data coming from the truck that the battery ha in that particular vehicle has gone through 80% of its life and it's time to order one, have one delivered to a parts, get with the driver of that vehicle, have it scheduled, uh, invoice it, all done without a phone call. It's predictive maintenance. And uh, so that, uh, we're just getting started with that in, in, in the trucking world. And as more of this big data becomes available, those algorithms can be, can be written and to, to save you money. So they even came down to a dollar total for, and I just put up the, the heavy duty vehicles and uh, based on 80,000 miles uh, annually. Uh, and they say per truck, per month, that a telematic system effectively managed, and I'm gonna come back to effectively managed uh, a couple of times here, uh, can save $1,470 a month. So, We've all heard of ROI, return on investment. Has anybody heard of COI? Let's see. Back in the back, Mr. Geotab at the presentation, of course. <laughs> COI, cost of ignoring. So in this case, cost of ignoring, there's money to be had. If you ignore it, that is your cost of ignoring. So, uh, uh, you know, yeah, we can talk about re return on investment, but there's also a cost of, of ignoring, so $1,470. So there is a lot of, of, of good, but it takes effectively managing. Anybody know what his real life name is? Lee Van Cleef. Lee Van Cleef, that's it. So the bad. So what is the bad of ELDs? Effectively managing. Effectively managing changes everything. In order to get the good, you have to measure and do something about all of that data that's coming through your through your telematics. And that can change your entire culture of your, your company. It, it, there is a huge learning curve that takes time. That's bad. It could can take different staff. You know, if I've got a, well, I've got a, a veteran driver that uh, that I use to do my logs, log auditing for me. Well, is that the right skill that you're going to need once that is come becomes an ELD, and that is now data that comes through on a spreadsheet or in a report? Is it that same skill set that you need, or do you need somebody that knows how to manipulate spreadsheets to give you the the, the data that you need? So, uh, it, it's going to require a shift in the types of maybe administrative people that you have. Internal controls, uh, again, to get the good out of the ELD, you're going to have to change your in internal controls, which is a tough thing to do. It, uh, it's going to change how you do things. More bad. Buyer beware. Uh, not all telematic systems are the same. There's open systems. An open system is, think of your smartphone, uh, your, your Android phone. You've got the, the basic platform of the phone. Yes, it can call, receive calls, it can even take pictures. But I want it to do all these other things. Well, there's an app for that. There's a marketplace. It, they all sync with my phone. An open telematic system is kind of the same way. There's the base platform that has the data in it. But now I want the data to do this for me. And well, there's an app for that. And uh, so it's made to be integrated with other things. So that's an open system. A closed system is, is, is a system that, you know, if, if I'm the manufacturer, uh, I control what access is in there. I control the reports that you get. If you want to integrate my device with something you're already using, you know, I may have to say no because I don't have the I don't have this, the technology to be able to integrate with all this other stuff, or I don't have the engineers to be able to do it. Or maybe they say, "Yes, I can do that, but it has to be my staff that can do it. It's not the marketplace. It is." Sorry, keep hitting that. 
uh, it is not uh, uh, the marketplace that determining and you have to pay what they say that you uh, are going to need to pay in order for it to integrate so that's a closed system there's features vary uh, you know you can get top of the line features and you know it'll measure the uh, temperature of your reefer trailer and even though you have a flatbed operation uh, you know uh, but the features are there if you know on, on so you've got to be very aware of what you need so that you get the features that you want how am I doing on time Five. Five. All right, we got to. So there's security. You know, can the systems be hacked? What kind of uh, what, what kind of security uh, precautions did they put into place? Uh, functions, communications vary. Uh, uh, you've got to, uh, you've got to communicate that data. And there's you know there's AT and T networks. There's there's the the T-Mobile and the Sprint and the Verizon. Uh, all those are that data has to come through somebody's network. Algorithms, uh, how they program is different. You know, there's one uh, system that I saw data on where the uh, they had ping points on a map. And this happened to be through I-84 from Portland to, 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 to Boise, so it went through the gorge. And this system, tr you know, tracked the miles based on ping point the ping point in a straight line and even though the truck went 84 and winding around it just one ping point was on highway 80, I-84 the next ping point was over on the Washington side the next ping point was on the Oregon side the next one was on the Washington side and it's calculating that miles straight line even though the truck was doing all of there I did it again uh, doing all of this uh, zigzagging so uh, uh, how the manufacturers measures that and the and the algorithms that it uses makes a, a huge difference and you know what's the depth of programming for somebody that just got in the business what's the depth of programming for somebody that has 500,000 units out there uh, there is a difference so bad buyer beware you've got to really know what you're getting into there's different maps uh, and the maps uh, there's Google Maps there's Bing maps, there's other maps, what map system do they use? So costs, there's hardware costs, and then there's telematics costs. Hardware, top end, 800 bucks plus, you know, with all of the hardwiring and the, the, the units, the black box, and the mounting, uh, you know, that's on the high end. Uh, there's mid-range, mid uh, I think out there we have uh, an E-Road device that's got the black box contained in the, in the front end display that the driver sees so uh, uh, you know that's you know in the five hundred dollar range uh, what what is really coming into play now is what they call plug and play where it's a uh, not sure, your device that just simply plugs in your black box and it's got the data and then it's a BYOD bring your own device to be the front end the, 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 where the driver interacts. So that hardware can be as little as a hundred bucks in that range. Uh, but then you've got to bring your own device. It will work on your smartphone. If, you've already, if the driver's already got a smartphone, you've got your BYOD. Uh, a lot of drivers don't want to use their smartphone and have to hand it over to the enforcement officer to look at their logs. They want to maybe dedicate a, a tablet uh, to do that. Well, you can go on Amazon, you can buy a tablet for a hundred bucks and then uh, there's the uh, 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 the mounting that you have to do. Mounting, uh, I discovered, is almost as expensive as the tablet, so it's uh, quite quite expensive. Telematics, again, there's going to be a difference between the company. The company has a contract with the telematics, has a contract with AT and T, has a contract with T-Mobile for the data. If uh, you know, uh, and there's a monthly fee for that, so they're going to pass that on to you per unit and uh, monthly fees for a full set of data to be able to get that uh, COI, to get that 1400 bucks with all of that different data coming is probably going to be, seems like the pricings are coming down because of uh, competition, so that's all good. Right now I, I think it's probably in the 25 to $35 a month range to get a full set of data. They're coming out with limited sets of data. Say, I, I don't want to jump into this, uh, this telematics thing 
you know, with both feet, I think I want to start with just basic compliance and getting some limited data. Uh, there's some of the plans now coming out that uh, are under $20 a month uh, in the telematics range. So, again, it depends on what you want, uh, depends on what you're looking for, what, what you want to use it for. So, the ugly. Basically, the ugly is with the ELD, it's a quicker road to FMCSA health if you're not effectively managing it. If, if, if you approach it with, God dang it, I've got to have an ELD in the trucks, so I'm just going to slap them in there, I'm not going to manage it, uh, you know, I'm not going to have my dispatchers pay attention to the hours that uh, the ELD says are available, uh, I as a driver, I'm not going to interact with it. FMCSA will simply be able to say, send me, six, send me your data file for the last six months, and they can have a report probably within 10 minutes after running it through their, their enforcement system that will take that data and simply measure it and it'll come back to a report. So the ugly, it's a quicker road to failure than it will have ever been before where they used to have to take your logs and Skip was the only guy I knew that could manually do logs and, and do it one driver in about two minutes. You got one minute? All right. So. So in a nutshell, the ugly becomes uh, FMCSA hell out of service uh, will be in the way of logs, uh, driver logs will become much easier. So good, bad, and the ugly. Quick tips, uh, game plan. You, you've really got to approach it with a game. What do I want it to do? Do I want just basic compliance or do I need to integrate it with other things to make my, uh, make my organization uh, uh, be able to save some of that uh, uh, money that's uh, left on the table by not doing it. You know, choose your technology wise, wisely. Don't pay for the bells and whistles that you're not going to use. And then don't underbuy. That's a whole other discussion. Uh, underbuying. Uh, buying a basic inexpensive unit that's made for an ELD, but hey, I think I can use this data for IFTA. Well, you can quickly get into IFTA hell by not having the right data to be able to support the taxes that you paid. And it's a different, it's similar, but it can be different. <coughs> ELDs, you only need to keep the data six months. If the, you need to keep it for four years. So who's keeping that data if, if you're using it for, for IFTA? So, uh, so don't underbuy for what you want to use it for. Start the transition. It takes time. The people that have made the transition say it's not easy. It's six months. Uh, there's a lot of learning, not only for the drivers, but for the operation side of things to, to, to make sure that everybody is in sync with, with, with what's happening. And don't, don't think it's a one and done thing. Okay, I've got ELDs in, I'm done. Well, that's just not going to be the case. There's lots of driver turnover. Every time you turn a driver, they may come to you from another company that had a completely different system that they don't know how to operate your system. Uh, you're, you're going to have to have a continuous uh, training program. So, good, bad, and the ugly. So, do we have time for questions? Or am I out of time? Nope. I'm on. Nine, All right. So, we do have some time for some questions. Hopefully I didn't speed through that too fast. Yes, sir. Well, it's been several months since the ELD firewall came out uh, and the certified list, and perhaps it can be spoke, addressed you know, later with the telematics. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm really curious what, if anybody knows, why have the major providers <laughs> not gotten into it yet. Is something moving in the background that we're not aware of? Absolutely. And uh, yeah, uh, we've got the time, we can talk about that. Uh, what is not in place is the FMCSA side of how enforcement is going to receive this. They are building software to be able to receive this data. And they have not announced what that is yet. So the major players are saying, why do I want to go out and self-certify when I really don't know how I have to interact with enforcement's systems. So they are, I can tell you, they all are going to have an ELD. If you've got PeopleNet, if you've got uh, Qualcomm, Rand McNally, you know, Geotab, you know, all the name brands out there, they are going to have an ELD product and it is going to be certified, but they're waiting for the end result and they're thinking, 
how do all these other people who self-certify themselves when they don't know how the FMCSA is going to interact with their unit? So uh, there's been people on that list that have been taken off the list uh, that have actually been sued by the FMCSA for fraud, for fraudulently filling out the self-certification. Uh, if you buy one of those uh, devices that uh, uh, aren't well backed uh, and it's found out that they really don't meet the FMCSA requirements, you own that equipment. Now you're going to have to go out and buy something else that is that will work. So you've got to be careful going in. And the reason they're not on the bandwagon yet, these major carriers, is because not all parts of the puzzle have been determined. And they're going to, it, it's getting close to the timeline. And, uh, you know, I know. Uh, Geotab mentioned at their, their conference that it's uh, early second quarter when they will be certified and on the list. I know E-Road is planning on the first quarter of this year uh, to be self-certified. Uh, I imagine it's going to be very, very similar with the, uh, the other manufacturers as well. Online, uh, someone asked what year uh, of vehicle is it where it's not? It's uh, 2000 and older, and it's going to be based on the chassis VIN number. It sits, you can't take a new truck and put an old engine in it and, and think you're going to uh, escape. It's, it's going to be based on the, the, the VIN number of the, of the chassis as far as the age of the unit. Well, we still have to do paper logs with those older vehicles or what? Well, uh, again, there are systems that will work with the older systems. You know, they're basic, instead of hooking up to the uh, ECM and the OBD port, whatever it's called, uh, that you can you know, get hardwire. You don't get near as much data, but it can tell when the truck is moving. So uh, if you choose to not put an ELD in that unit because you just don't want to, they would have to keep with paper logs. They would be exempt from the ELD. They would have to keep the paper logs. Anything else? Uh, one more question. Yes, sir. So the, uh, the ELD basically goes with the driver, not the truck. Is that correct? It's going to, it's got to, it's got to be linked to the truck to know it's moving. So the systems have got to be, the, the, the ELD has to know who the driver is. So there's going to be a login. The driver is going to have a password or whatever that's going to have to log into the system. It's got to know when the truck is driving and it's got to know where it's at. So it's got to have those three components. So uh, in a carrier's ELD management system, they're going to have to assign uh, passwords and how to how to log in. Uh, uh, it, there's a whole another can of worms if it's a uh, a rental if a, if a rental truck. How is it going to move? FMCSA just said, well, we're going to let the rental fleets figure that out. We don't know. We'll, we're going to let the marketplace figure that part out. If, if you've got a rental truck today, it belongs to this driver. Tomorrow, it's going to belong to another driver. They've got to figure that out, and it's uh, uh, they're they're working on it. But, uh, mostly it's probably going to be a portable type of ELD type system. Okay. So um, if, you, if you log in and you have a team driver situation, it would be easy for them to uh, play with that. Is there any discussion of like on um, some smartphone where a thumbprint uh, logs on rather than just an ID? I think depending on the system you get, uh, there's different logins uh, type of, of systems. I, I And I, I'm, I'm not that deep into it. I, I do know, I think, again, intending this conference that, uh, Kyle, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Geotab offers kind of a, a almost like a keychain fob that you just swipe it and it knows you're there. Um, uh, there's, yep. there's always going to be an element of a humanness that is part of this. Um, the issue with using a technology like that, while it's as great as it would be to have like fingerprint sensors like that move next to phones and whatnot, it's not every device has it. Right now, we're relying on user ID passwords. So you have the co driver, we mentioned this before, I think it's three tabs on this one particular thing that I don't know about. Um, but each driver is logged in with their user ID and password. So you still have, and I'm going to have to imagine that they're going to have to accept that as that user ID and password. Is that person, does that person have to share their password? Just like with paper logs, I'm sure there's going to be. In a year or two, when we have a blog driver using the LD, I'm sure they're going to be tweaking things and finding finding out that there are ways to get around the certain rules and whatnot. So it's going to be a bit of a moving target, which is to the point why you want to partner with someone who's going to be changing things on the go. So I've been with GTAB on this particular side of things. We've 
for about nine months, and we've had three different versions of our, of our app. Um, we are literally waiting for, for FMCSA to tell us how to do that connection to their servers, and <coughs> we have an entire team design, designing this. So the next thing they change, because they will, is we'll be able to update our apps, and you won't have to change devices, you won't have to change anything. Just an update on your app, and we'll say, you can go. But for now, you check the chat for the way to go. And the technology changes quickly. I mean, iPhone just announced uh, their new version is going to, they're going to take away the, what, the, the menu button and make it a thumbprint thing. Uh, so as that becomes more common and out there, the technology is improved. You know, these, the, the way the ELD is, looks today uh, is not going to be how it's, it's going to look a year from now, two years from now. The technology just changes too, too fast. Uh, yes, Okay. Yes, sir. Um, how are we going to deal with like auditing or whatever with discrepancies between between like physical odometer readings and what the ELD is reporting? Because as you mentioned, some ping, right? Right. Well, if they're ping here, here, straight line, and you're curving, you're going to have a physical discrepancy between you, mechanical odometer and ELD reporting. You are. So and how do you, you know, what do we do? Well, as a, you know, I wish. Purposes. Wish Warren was here from the FMCSA. He called in sick today, but uh, he could uh, answer that from an enforcement type of uh, uh, question. But again, it goes to me. It goes back to the quality of the equipment that you get. Uh, there are systems out there that will measure the ping, but they they reconcile it with the actual odometer reading and saying, "Okay, this is what it is." Uh, the ones that uh, I know from the IFTA side, because that's more of my, my expertise than, than FMCSA, if, if they audit and see those straight line pings, they're going to say, okay, your distance is off 10%, so that means your entire fleet was off 10%. We're going to fine you based on a 10% difference. We didn't collect enough money from you based on that difference. So there can be penalties for doing that. The FMCSA distance, I mean, they're not, they're, they, they want to know where the vehicle is within a mile. They don't care to be your th three feet from here, which the systems can, can determine. The miles add up quick over 80,000 miles annually. Right. Yep. If, if there's a uh, significant difference, again, mostly what the FMCSA is concerned with is the driver recording all of the driving, and is it reasonable? And if it's reasonable, that's what they care about. Uh, but if you're using the data for other things like IFTA or maintenance, and you know you're going to get you're you're going to get off, and you can have some problems. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you.